Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Diogo2165. It looks like we got a Queen's Gambit on our hands, the Slav. Let's go Knight C3, we'll play the main line. Another Shevinenko. You know, I've been having so much good luck with this line, I'm going to keep playing it. Oh, he plays it differently. Okay, so now we have more of a um, semi-Slav type of position. What to do against this? I am not quite sure. Let's go queen c2. That seems sensible. Play it like an anti-Moran for now. Play c5. Yeah, can do that. So he's losing a tempo with the pawn, but I guess he's saying that I have a not-so-promising position, or at least a position where um, I'll have trouble proving an advantage in this coming play. Okay, I'll take on d5. Just to try to get him to take with the pawn. So I can at least play an IQP position against him. Checking who this guy is. He is anonymous. Pretty new account. He's having a think about which way to take back. I mean, he could conceivably play knight takes, but it seems risky because after I take him on d5, he takes with the queen. He's only loosely defending the bishop. So yeah, he probably makes the right call in taking that way. Play bishop e2. So my immediate plan is just to castle. I want to complete my development, and uh, after this, I'll probably decide whether I want to play rook d1 or b3 and then bishop b2. I'll probably play rook d1 first just to make him think about the d-pawn and also so he can't quite as easily advance d4 and offload uh, his isolated pawn. Because if black can, it get, can get the d5, d4 advance in too early in a position of this type, they tend to equalize. So there's not much going on in the in the position if uh, the d5 pawn gets traded for the e3 pawn. Black liquidate, liquidates their weakness. He plays bishop e6. Okay, normal move. I think I should just try to develop. Probably he'll play rook c8. Yeah, really standard stuff going on. He might move this bishop now to start clearing some pieces on the c-file. I think it would be mistaken for him to play d4 right now. It would be interesting, but probably premature. Now I'm going to do this just so my queen can come back to b1. If I deem that a square that I want to bring it to. He can play rook fd8. Hmm. Ops to try to trade bishops instead. Okay, I'll just go here. I don't think I'm unhappy about a dark square bishop trade. Because that's his better bishop. So if he wants to do that, I'm completely fine with that. I think he would have been better off retreating the bishop to a7. Maintain it on this diagonal from a7 to g1 where it could assist in, in the d4 advance. I'm interested to see if he'll take on b2 now. I didn't want to initiate the trade myself because his queen comes into a3. I'd rather prevent that. I don't have a whole lot going on threat-wise. You know, I'm treating this position pretty slowly, which is often how you want to play against the IQP. Don't want to try to rush anything because when they have the isolated queen pawn, they usually have sufficient space and good pieces. So I'm just going to play some useful moves like h3. Just taking care that he can't advance d4. I see he's burning a lot of time too, so that's why I'm trying to make some fast decisions. The clock will soon be a big factor. I think he's having some dissonance about bishop a3 now. Some cognitive dissonance. <laughs> I think he realizes he shouldn't have done that. We'll see if he has the fortitude to withdraw this bishop. And I still would love the bishops to be exchanged. But um, yeah, and he eventually agrees to it. Knight comes into e4. Okay. I can stick my knight on d4. I probably don't want to trade. I could also play bishop d3. Bishop d3 might be a good way to try to get him to simplify. 
Yeah, let's do that. I don't think my, my bishop is doing a whole heck of a lot on e2, so why not put it there? If he defends it with bishop f5, that weakens d5 further. So maybe I'll play bishop b1 and start attacking that pawn multiple times. Okay. Now where do I want my bishop? I probably want it on uh, this diagonal now. It's kind of tempting to move it back to f1 or something, but I somehow feel it will be more useful on this diagonal. He can play queen f6, which would pin my knight on c3 and also threaten bishop takes h3. So if he does that, I think I'll play knight d4. I like how knight d4 would shape up here. Yeah, let's do that. My king side's a little barren, but it doesn't seem like he can take advantage of that in a meaningful way. He could play queen g5, which would renew the bishop takes h3 threat. His time is really, really a problem, though, at this point. I think I'll just go king h1. Okay, knight there might allow me to play f4, does it not? I think it does. Yeah. Just fork him. I'll just take this guy. I'll just defend, trade queens, offer to trade queens. He's probably not going to take it. He'll probably go all the way back to h6. Yeah. Let's pester him with another exchange. <laughs> Repeat the position once to gain time, maybe. Let's move this rook over. Yeah, you know, attacking that. If I take it, he takes on c1. I think I can just take here, though. It's fine. If he takes back, I'll take on e6. Rook d2, he has some back rank problems. Like, I think I can play um, knight takes e4 now. I don't want to get too fancy because I am just winning, but uh, this move looks pretty much crushing. So let's do it. Yeah. And that I is checkmate. Mate. It didn't register for a second. I guess I might have been lagging. Oh, he resigned before I could checkmate him. <laughs> he technically resigned. Okay, so... This was like a uh, Shevinenko variation that turned into a semi-slav with a6. This is like kind of a trendy way to play this. So e3 and then e6, queen c2. Um, so this c5 move is like an attempt to equalize. I think he just burned a little too much time. Like, yeah, making making decisions like this. Because maybe knight takes is possible, but it's it's so risky looking and... I mean, even if it works out, it's not going to be that much better than e takes d5. So this was all fairly normal. I mean, his position is completely fine. This is like a type of position where um, uh, it might be a matter of taste which side you choose. And I think a good player could easily defend this position as black, and a good player as white might be able to extract some advantage playing against uh, an inferior player. So it's, uh, I mean, the computer's probably going to say it's about equal. Very close to equal. It's interesting that the computer also wants to trade bishops, or it was suggesting bishop a3. I think he should just play like rook fd8 in this position. Although, am I threatening knight takes d5? Okay, I am threatening this move now. Because I did play rook a c1. Well, I thought he should bring the bishop back to a7. Would make sense. And just look at it from his point of view. Yeah, I think if I were playing this position, I would 
probably play bishop a7. Because then it's it's on the same diagonal as um, the e3 pawn, so he, he might want to have it assist in playing d4. The bishop could also come to b8 in some circumstances. Yeah, I think this is a better move. d6 might also be okay. Queen b1, computer likes how I'm playing it. He trades in the knight e4. I went bishop d3. Okay, yeah, it just seems like I have a stable advantage now. And the trade of the dark square bishops is nice because I've it helps me secure the d4 square, and it's his better bishop. It's better than his light square bishop, which will be forever tied down to d5. And now he blundered with knight e5, just ran into f4. But given the time situation and me having a safe and better position, um, you know, I really like my chances to win this game, even if he doesn't blunder. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that game, and I'll be back with another video today, at least one more. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye.